Hi, we're Rod and Sue, and welcome to the second part, and the last part, of our six weeks tour of France in the summer of 23. We are at Camping Alturin, at a place called Andy, right on the French-Spanish border, not too far south of Barretz. This is the closest campsite to the fabulous beach at Andy, and if you're into surfing, this is the place to be. Today, we're going to catch the ferry over to Spain, are we, sir? We are. Just across the river, it is. A grey looking start to the day, but it was still very warm and the sun was forecast to come out about lunchtime. Where are you now? Spain. Oh, you're in Spain, eh? One minute, France, now Spain. Just a little boat trip across the water there. Onda Ribia is a nice Spanish town. It has an ancient quarter, a castle, and has been on the front line of border disputes for centuries. Hostilities finally ceased in 1794 with the signing of the Peace of Basel. Lunch was a selection of tapas and white wine. Perfect. Moving on tomorrow, so I can do some work here. It's so big here. And hopefully somewhere a bit flatter. Yes, we are really clean. Anyway, I'll go down to wash now. Please, and I'll clear up here. We left camping Algera and after a quick stop at the Intermarché, we headed north along the coastal road to a campsite just outside of a town called Soka. We had a nice pitch, Sue got her washing done, and we had our very own Harry. The harbour at Soka's about a 15 minute walk from the campsite. Yeah. What's, yeah. what's the temperature? Well, last time I looked, 33, like 44. The following day, we walked into Soka and we caught the ferry over to Saint-Jean-de-Luz on the opposite side of the bay. Saint-Jean-de-Luz is an attractive town. Many of the buildings are from the 16th and 17th century. In the days of pirates, the British used to call it the Viper's Nest. And during the Peninsular War 1813-1814, the Duke of Wellington had his winter HQ here. A very good choice, I would say. It also has a fabulous beach and a lot of eating places. I had a really nice seafood tagliatelle and Sue had a pizza.
That evening the wind got up and there was some rain, so we put on the side to give us some protection and it works well. It was here that we got the fridge working again on 240. Reading the manual it said that the fridge could cut out if the ambient temperature got too high and to remedy this it had to cool down and the reset button had to be pressed. This we did and it started working again. We had a really relaxing final day at Soka. There were a couple of bars by the harbour and it was nice just to chill and watch the world go by. This was a nice stopover, a nice marina, and the lake is huge, it's like being on the coast. But next morning after a sunny start, it began raining, so we packed up and headed north. Looking at Google Maps, deciding where to go next, we spotted a citadel marked at a place called Blay. It also mentioned that there was a municipal campsite there, so it sounded perfect. So, I'll on see. And when we got to Blay, we realised that the municipal campsite was actually inside the citadel. A no-brainer. Had to pitch up in there. The citadel is huge. It was designed by Volba in the 17th century to guard and control the access to the estuary leading to Bordeaux. And apart from the campsite, it's got a hotel, restaurant, shops, and a church that was being used to display art. And there's a car ferry that runs from here across the estuary to Le Marc. And coming that way, it would have cut out the congestion around Bordeaux. Thank you. 
this is a busy camping car park. We were checking the app as we were traveling and you can see the number of vacant pitches hovering around two to four. And we got there with two pitches vacant and it was full shortly after. Royan is a popular seaside town. It's very modernist in looks, lots of concrete. It was rebuilt in the 50s and the 60s after being destroyed by bombing during the Second World War. It has some really nice beaches, huge marina and lots of eating places. And we enjoy spending a couple of days here. Now here I have one of my favourites, Mules and Fritz, and Sue had a burger. It was miserable as we got here, grey and drizzle, but by the time we'd set up the pitch, all that had cleared and we had a very warm and sunny afternoon. How about that one? Right at the bottom. Take with the tyre down. Yeah, that's the course we drove across, and we're stranded. Uh, but not for long. It's impassable for about two, two and a half hours either side of the high tide. We walked back down to the causeway about three hours later, and vehicles were already crossing. It was another miserable driver, lots of rain, and this bit was an accident. I miscounted the exits on the roundabout and we ended up in the Super U. And a really good excuse to top up on the cheese and the wine. It rained the whole journey, but again, by the time we had set up the pitch, the sun came out and it was beautiful the rest of the day. The campsite is next to a huge municipal park, lots of walking opportunities. Lusignan is a nice little town, home of the Lusignan family, whose most famous son is probably Guy de Lusignan, who was King of Cyprus, King of Jerusalem, and a buddy of Richard the Lionheart.
We were a little bit worried about going down here, but the sign said camping, so down we went. The office was closed, there was a sign on the door saying there'd be somebody there at 4.30, so we parked up had a bit of lunch and then walked into town. Another very nice town. A lot of history here. Uh, Amory IV of Troyes was a companion to William the Conqueror and he was a commander at the Battle of Hastings. We got back to the campsite dead on 4.30, just as the manager turned up. Uh, she checked us in, uh, said we could park where we like, and then off she went and we parked up just here and we were the only people on the site. And getting away from the site was just as tight as coming in. Maybe a little bit tighter. Yeah. This was a nice site. It's an axi site. Uh, they had a snack bar, they got a bar, a swimming pool, uh, good sized pitches. We paid an extra couple of euros per night for the riverside pitch. We enjoyed it here. The chateau is quite impressive uh, and the town has a lot of its original fortifications still standing. Uh, the chateau is where they make a, a premium wine called Chateau de Montreal Ballet, which unfortunately we didn't get to try. Heading for the bar. Going for tea. What are you going to have? Fish and chips. I'll have the burger. You have a burger, okay? I think so. Here's to here we are. This is another really nice site. Good sized pitches, swimming pool, bar, restaurant, washing machines. Everything you could possibly want from a campsite really. 
and all within walking distance of the town of Samura. The chateau has seen a lot of history. It was originally constructed in the 10th century. It's been added to and altered a lot over the years, uh, not least by Henry II of England. In the 1600s, it was converted into an army barracks, and 200 years later, Napoleon Bonaparte used it as a state prison. Nowadays, it's a museum, and well worth a visit if you're ever down this way. And this was the best beef bourguignon we'd ever tasted, followed by a creme brulee. We've had to stop for a beer, haven't we? Hydration. One of the best things about touring this year have been all the wonderful people that we've met and just any of them just happen to be watching. Hi and enchanté. There's a train station. Yeah. Now this is an expensive bit of motorway. It's about 160, 170 miles long. Uh, it saves about an hour's driving. But if you stay on it from Samir, as far as Khan, it's cost you about 50 euros. I don't like pre-booking. Once you've booked, you're committed. But as this is going to be our last stop, we did. It's only 25 degrees apparently today, only. We spent a lovely couple of days here just relaxing, wandering along the seafront, walking into Oistraham. It was perfect for our final stop in France on this trip. Just moved out to the uh, camping car park because uh, our time was up, 12 o'clock. We had a video out by. Um, we're in the car park next door. Uh, a bit of red cheese before we catch the boat later on. Beautiful sunny day. It's going to be one of the hottest days of the year, apparently. We left Lyon sur Mer uh, about half past one. We got to the port about two. Uh, we had to be checked in by 3 30 latest. It was a 4 30 sailing. And before we knew it, we had set sail. We we're leaving France behind and headed for the UK. We had our final night of this tour at Port Sola just outside of Portsmouth before heading back to the West Country the following day.